why am I here? I don't know, there's a big, big bunch of text up there. Kind of outlines it. Let's get started. Non-standard optimization. Non-standard. What, what, what do I mean by non-standard? Everyone else tells you to merge your meshes. They atlas your materials. They tell you to crunch compress your textures and reduce those textures resolution. And I am here to tell you how to optimize your content in ways you may not have considered using tricks you may not know. Ooh. Well, I mean, most of the people here are probably going to know at least a few of these. This is a shotgun talk. I am booting one big blast and assuming that maybe one of these will stick with you. If I can get one thing in your head, if I can get y'all to do one thing, I, I walk away happy. All right. So who the hell am I? Why am I talking about all of this? Most of you here probably know at least a little bit, but for the people who are watching from home, and for some of those who don't know me that much, boop, I go by table. Name's Will. Nice to meet you. I am a composer. I do audio engineering work. I've been writing music for about 10 years, and obviously I enjoy uh, drawing dumb stuff for fun. Uh, most human beings know me as the guy who runs the largest art community on Discord. Uh, I'm also pretty well known amongst like Discord community, like uh, like community management channels, as being like a like a consultation person. I do consultation for like telling you, hey, your community is this good or not good or whatever. Uh, that doesn't really matter. I don't really like doing it either. Thank you all for being so accompanying. I prefer to do this five, 50 million times more. Um, I have been absolutely dummy obsessed with information theory and data compression like for years now i can't really tell you why i just really think the concept of like taking a certain amount of information and then expressing it exactly the same way but smaller and then being able to take that same information on the other end and then re like i think that's the coolest shit ever i think everyone should agree considering most of the internet would not exist without data compression techniques that dated back in the 60s so i mean or no not even 40s radio everything media ever relies on data compression in a way even all the way back to the early 1900s like thank you thank you very smart people for doing a lot of very smart math we're all very appreciative um as i am here most people know me as a creator i mostly focus on like none of them are public yet but i'm someone who focuses on like art worlds that are more for like the visual aesthetic and like telling sort of an emotion and narrative single player experiences uh multiplayer hard ah uh, scary um, um, <laughs> I tend to hang around lots of public spaces and have met tons of creators doing that way. I have helped personally many creators with their world projects actually making, you know, their worlds like way smaller than they had to be. And as such, I am informally known amongst many as the optimization king. Um, I don't think of myself that way. I think of myself as a lunatic. I am a lunatic. And absent, I will get to that in a second. Most people here probably know me for creating the smallest, most optimized world in the game. Um, I am proud of it. It was months of reverse engineering work. Uh, my artist rendition is very nice, very lovely, home world to many. I am very happy with how it came out. Uh, half of the people seem to think it's cool. The other half of the people seem to think I'm a jackoff who just created VRChat's version of John Cage's 433. But you know what? I created VRChat's version of John Cage's 433, so what can you say? Um, I am a lunatic. I am an absolute lunatic. You are listening to a lunatic. You are about to take advice from a lunatic. This is my mood 24-7. I need to make this clear. I will eat everything. It all goes in here. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I will eat literally all of your performance. It's all going in here. I am a lunatic. Raving. Raving lunatic. And you should take every single thing I say with at least a teeny grain of salt. Like, please do everything I say, but at the same time, keep that in mind. I'm sorry. Um, after this talk, you should, you know... <laughs> It speaks for itself. This is where I want all of you to be after I am done with the, what's it, 25 minutes? Hopefully more. Um, you know, 
hit that hammer, hit the hammer, whack the cube. Don't whack the blue cube, whack the black and white cube. That's the one you need to be whacking. The blue cube is okay. We all love the blue cube here. Praise, praise the fruit. Why did I grab the laser pointer? Okay, now you might be asking, Black Magic? Doesn't that sound like you're talking about Plank now? Are you just going to start going on about what exactly is stored? And the No, I'll do that later. I'm doing a write-up. You're fine. I've already addressed this. I'm having conversations with you before you ever have a conversation with me. Lunatic, let's go. Okay, so clearly I'm just, like, trying to avoid actually talking? Which is a problem when it's called talks. I think we should start talking. I'm gonna start talking. Fundamentals. Because it's always good to refresh yourself every once in a while, right? I think we can all agree. All right. Repeat after me, and I mean it. Repeat after me. Everything is data. Everyone say it. Everything, Everything is, data. is data. Cool, now say the second one. Everything is data. Cool, now say the third one. <laughs> okay, say the one below where there's actually text. The above. Exactly. Everything is data. And I'm like, the amount of people, the amount of people. <laughs> The amount of people I have to talk to about this, and like they don't realize this, is kind of astounding. I'm not gonna lie. Like, everything you put in is data. Every extra component on a game object is stored there. Every value in that is also stored. Every transform, every little bit of imprecision is kept there. If you have additional channels on something, it is kept. Everything is kept. Everything contributes. Literally everything. Even if you're sitting there thinking, that couldn't possibly contribute, it does. It contributes. Everything is data. So, you know, fun times ahead in the Unity land. Cool. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. I probably, uh, 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 I'm doing everything wrong. Woo! The more compressible the data, the better. The less data stored, also better. Generally, the idea here is that if you can make your data more compressible and not compromise your artistic integrity, you should. If you can put some like level of detail towards something that you know makes more sense, you absolutely should. If you're making a cool vase, then do the cool things in ways that don't take up a whole bunch of data, ideally speaking. If you're going to make a vase with like little flat colors, don't make them like, you know, large textures you don't need for single color things. Don't use multiple like solid color materials, which is usually more compressible, but performance goes down and everything's a trade off as you're about to see. You know, vertex colors are cool. Smaller little color atlases are cool. Keep doing cool things, you'll be cool. Don't do cool things, I will watch you in your sleep. Amazing. Oh no. This next one is something I'm a little proud of. This is tables tantalizing triangle. You will not avoid this. You cannot avoid this. I already know some of you are sitting there thinking, well, I can think of an exception. No, there are no exceptions. High fidelity, high performance, low file size, pick two. Pick two. The caveat, the thing you should be thinking about, is the fact that I want you to imagine a little circle in the middle. It is easier to think of this concept when you're thinking of an extremes. You're easier to think of like something like Plank, which would be high performance, low file size, but then absolutely no fidelity at all. Uh, all the way line at the very bottom. You put two dots on each side, make a line in the middle. That's cool. Usually, you want your line to go through the middle of the triangle. Make a little circle in the middle. You want to pass through that somehow. Everything is a trade-off. And in effect, by going for one thing, you're going to be foregoing another, but you want to make sure everything's at least somewhat balanced. You can have something that's a bit of everything, but you lean more towards one thing or another. And it really just depends on the project you're going for. Um, usually, I would personally recommend, might seem a little contrary coming out of my mouth, but I would usually recommend foregoing the low file size in favor of making high fidelity and high performance worlds at the same time. Obviously, file size is important. But at the same time, performance is also important because just because someone downloads your world once and then caches it and they had to wait like five minutes to do it, 
doesn't mean that they're not going to have a good time enjoying their experience there. You know what's not going to make them have a good time enjoying their experience there? If they're sitting there with the mirror off, just looking at some nondescript, like, you know, location, like they're looking like this, and they're like, wow, 15 frames per second, free projection. I'm enjoying all of this. This is great. My day is not at all ruined and my eyes do not hurt. We don't want that in VR. That's kind of important for your eyes to not hurt in virtual reality. <laughs> go for us, go for please this. Unity compression, this is a quick one. Uh, Unity packages are just tarballs with extra steps. They use gzip. If you're trying to optimize your Unity packages for um, you know, in, like doing the best sort of uh, package content, follow, read up on gzip, follow specs, make sure your data is like compressible to that format. The act, what most of you should be caring about, the actual data bundles that you know, every world is coming is compressed with LZMA. Once again, read in the LZMA. Seven zip, pretty poggers. You know? Good format. Woo! Optimized design principles. This is a big one, and I'm not going to get into everything right now because it could be in its entire other talk. I could spend six hours talking about this. So obviously, I'm going to go a little quick. Here's the important bits. Always think about where the player is going to be and what the player is going to see. Pretty simple, huh? Everyone's going to sit toward the mirror. Everyone's going to go where the most obviously, like, enjoyable objects are. If someone thinks, oh, this is a pretty view, they're going to sit by the pretty view. Like, optimizing your content around knowing where the people are going to be, what they're going to see, and what usually is being shown to them is everything, especially if you're making worlds that are not just like one hangout room. I am not talking for worlds who make one hangout room. This is very much a you know big world thing. Uh, combination of message should always make sense. Don't combine every single mesh in your world into one. I had a big argument with someone about this. Uh, they were like, oh no, there's actually some, you know, black magic trick you can do to splice up some meshes and whatever. And I'm like, what, wh where have you ever seen that happen? And he listed a bunch of Unreal games. And I was like, that's Unreal Engine. This is Unity. Um, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> don't make everything one mesh. Uh, unless, like, your entire world is a box. <laughs> Which probably shouldn't be. But, you know, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. That's you. That's your decision. Um... Obviously, if you're doing architecture and level design, cleverly hiding rooms and objects while inside other rooms, meaning like no windows, no partition gaps, no big wide entryways, or at least less in them, um, means that you have an easier time actually working with occlusion. Four Ponies did that really good. I was thoroughly impressed with how your map performed in that regard. Good job! Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, I'm going over like like small things but just like throw me a message or something about this i will talk about this for hours i'm in vc all the time just ask uh much better than having to you know pull up my time here for doing all that now you're probably sitting here and you're thinking okay so this is all stuff i probably could have figured out why are you gonna just like actually give me the the, the know-how I'm, I'm thinking about it i'm definitely it's, it's on my plate i could consider it Mm. You know what? I think I'm going to press X. Cool. Let's talk about LOD calling. Um, you should be sticking LOD groups on as many objects as you feasibly can where you care about them not being rendered at a distance or, or them not being rendered with Unity's uh, rather esoteric occlusion calling system. I think all of us here know what I'm talking about. Unity's occlusion calling. I thought I understood occlusion calling, and then I came to Unity, and I was like, nothing makes sense anymore. Okay, so to get around this, designing around aggressive LOD calling can help a whole bunch when you're in a scene and you're looking at some distant building, and for some reason, just because you have a window open, half of the things inside the building are being rendered, even though there's no way you can see all of them. And from what I have tested, everyone, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, from my initial tests, the overhead of having LOD groups on a good chunk of objects is no, just in completely mitigated by the performance benefits you get from reducing that many draw calls. A good example of this is in my current map, uh, map project blank, I have a cafe 
that is high up on a mountain, has like a whole like vista overhead, and pretty much everything in there has an LED object, an LED like with a LED group on it. Why? Because when you're anywhere else in the map, and you're just looking in the general direction of the cafe, everything gets rendered. Everything would always get rendered. It was like, okay, why the, the occlusion calling system just wants to say, all right, everything is visible, even though you are literally like a mile away and you're just looking at a little blip on your screen. Um, the design of it being up on the mountain was an intentional design choice I made, because if you notice, there is literally no place you can be in the map where you can see everything inside of it unless you are either inside of it or right on top of it where the hole is where you go in from the top feeling that it caves into a hole and you fall down you can only see everything in there when you are either in there or just above it which means i could turn the lod calling so aggressive that you could just be standing just below it right where that picture on the very right is and even if you're looking right at everything nothing's being rendered because you can't possibly see any of it design around knowing where the player is going to be and what the player is going to see and you can get much more aggressive optimization results as, uh, as a result of that oh, everyone who play tested it with me was like oh yeah that's way smoother uh, uh you know there's no more hitching when you're walking up toward the uh the cafe lots of fun stuff next one's gonna be interesting this one made a whole lot of sense to me coming into Unity, coming from my, like, audio background, but surprisingly, not a lot of people seem to understand this. So let's go over it together. Um, I'm not going to sit here and explain lossy audio compression and, like, the, or even just audio compression in general, because I could literally be here all day. Generally speaking, the lower the volume, the more compressible audio is. This is usually because two things. The amplitude to the peaks being more similar to each other means the numbers are more compressible, so everything is more like similar and it's not as extreme. And when you make everything quieter, especially if you're doing lossy encoding, the lossy encoders have more of a, hey, all of the stuff on the high frequencies are way quieter, so it's more like of a bias, you can't hear it, everything gets like, you know, filtered out. Um, that is purely like, those benchmarks are purely lossless. That is like, three of the same exact lossless file of a bad example by the way like i intentionally did a one that wouldn't give as good results as like any other kind of file a really loud uh dj mix that i did back uh, for a halloween party earlier like a month back and just by reducing the volume you got like you know first six uh no, no, well over like 14 megabytes and then another 14 megabytes for half the volume which is basically lossless like not technically but i'm not going to you know get into the pulp just that it's basically lossless you could always crank it back up um and like it just that much space difference it makes a difference it really does which leads me to doing this if you are not working with dynamic audio at all and you are reducing the volume in unity you are doing it wrong you're doing it wrong stop that re-encode the file actually lower volume like if you're like okay you turn it down and you need it to 0.5 and you're like this is a good volume for the music in my world so i'm going to make it negative 6 db i'm going to export that out boom sounds exactly the same and then you put it obviously you set the volume to one in unity sounds exactly the same uh the file size is lower uh you're welcome free space free space Benchmarks here don't show that much of a difference because once again, I chose a really intentionally like even if you have a really not very compressible thing, you still will get about one or two megs off of just making the volume a reasonable limit, which all of you should be doing because as you all should probably know by now, your audio should never be overbearing to the point where you cannot have a conversation even if your volume is at 100%. Please stop blasting out people's ears. <laughs> all of you know this, but everyone watching yeah stop blasting people's ears <laughs> on that note if you are doing any kind of audio effect in unity and you are not doing something dynamic please stop please stop i will judge you i will heavily judge you i've actually seen this in the wild before i included this slide because i have actually helped a few people with this 
um they're like i wanted to do like for example you want to have like a city world you walk outside a nightclub you hear a very low pass music coming from the nightclub you're never supposed to be in there so you're never going to actually hear the normal version they're using unity effects for it it's using cpu at runtime and the file is exactly the same go low pass the go low pass it like bake the low pass in file size of resurrection from celeste trans rights uh went from 14 just under 15 megs to three 15 three same exact thing if you just did it yourself in unity cpu usage is saved file size is heavily reduced it's not rocket science people you got this i believe in you <laughs> you're gonna notice a trend of just hey let's modify our data to be more compressible i'm gonna keep saying this over and over out of texture UV cleaning. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. I know a couple people here already do this, but just in case you don't know, if you have a texture and you are not going to edit it anymore, it is like crystallized, you are just like, okay, I am never gonna touch this again. Uh, open it up in your favorite image editor of choice. Export your UV layout from your favorite 380 editor of choice. Overlay the texture, or like overlay the layout onto the texture. Add like a five pixel like a border stroke uh, uh, using like whatever effects you can in order to just ensure that the UVs don't like sample the colors from you know whatever when you're gonna blacken it. Uh, select all the dead space and blacken it. Like don't leave all that extra data that literally is not being used there. Blacken it. Uh, shave a whole bunch of space. If you're doing normal maps, obviously do that like kind of palish blue hue. That's like the baseline for normal maps uh if you're doing something that's mostly one custom color use the custom color it's not hard and then everything becomes more compressible your textures will love you your worlds will love you this doesn't make any difference to memory at runtime but you know quest users will be like oh thank you so much i really appreciate it bottom of my heart amazing let's talk about hierarchy optimization so i'm not going to go too far into the <laughs> I just thought it would fit. I just thought it would fit. Don't don't look at me like that. I just thought it would fit. I don't know why. Three days of crunch drawing all of these. Don't don't blame me. Um, I'm not going to go too far into this because there are a lot more technical people on the internet who have much more to say. Um, and you know, you can always go look at that. But just touching on this a little bit, since some people don't seem to understand this, um, every game object is additional overhead. So when you organize your project everything is nice when you have like game object folders but if you're running a massive project and you just have like hundreds or like you're getting somewhere having thousands of game object subfolders and stuff um that is running you are incurring overhead for numerous reasons uh this is also the same deal if you're like making worlds entirely out of unity cubes uh don't do that we've seen this numerous times don't do that uh <laughs> The sheer amount of game objects are just gonna initialize on load and then everyone's not gonna have a fun time. You've all been to the meetup. You've all seen this happen a couple times. And yes, the names of each game object are stored. Don't name them stupidly long strings. Don't put the entirety of the B movie as the name of a game object. I'm, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> more relevant to the you know most of what you all do key pickups as close to root as possible like every time a pickup or anything animated by the way this also applies to animated objects obviously anytime anything has to update a transform all of its children and parent objects have to update their transforms too they also have to update physics systems and a couple other components like everything in the background has to get updated for all the parents and children every time every frame key pickups as close to root as possible if you keep all the pickups in your scene in one big folder at root it is both tidy and you're not going to just you know have them strewn around in like a bunch of subfolders because i used to do this all the time um and then just take up all that extra performance all of those cpu cycles we don't want that why do you want to use more cpu cycles everything everything is time and time is money don't burn money optimize the stuff Let's talk about mesh compression. Happy birthday, Hamsky. Um, mesh compression in Unity is a bit weird. There are a couple of things. I'm gonna get into some caveats, but generally here is some overall like advice. 
you're gonna see an option in your import settings called mesh compression and almost always unless you know exactly what you're doing you're going to want to use this uh please for the love of god the precision of all of your mesh data will be lowered in order to be more compressible you are literally just taking everything being 32-bit floats and you are just making it not 32-bit floats with less precision chop it all off make everything zeros everything's more compressible um low is indistinguishable like if you're going to default default to low it you're not going to notice a difference. Seriously, sit there for hours, you won't. It's indistinguishable. You, you have the file size of your meshes. Medium, you can kind of notice it a little bit if you strain your eyes really hard. It gets a little more, but there is somewhat of a visual difference. High, definitely a visual difference. You're going to notice it, but obviously you're gonna get a lot of space. I usually will only use high for things like distant LODs. Um, medium and low i like kind of alternate between whether it's like important like a big big object where the precision of individual vertices is important because i blew it up like to 10 miles wide uh, uh and you're inside of it usually then you won't you want to mesh you will be like do low instead of medium but like most things should probably be medium uh talking a little bit about the actual format you should be using for meshes uh, UN16 is better than UN32. If you have a mesh that is 65,534 tries or lower, you can store it as a UN16. It'll be stored as halves instead of floats, which uses far less memory in some cases, and in most cases tends to be lower on file size. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is one caveat I just want to throw in real quick. I do not know this at all please someone else like correct me on this or if like if anyone knows this information that'd be i would love to hear it i have heard through the grapevine that mesh compression uh like you know from before and enabling read write on meshes actually disables the ability for meshes to be you at 16 and everything gets stored as floats anyway i honestly don't know i've never like i've tested it a few times i haven't seen like differences i don't know if that's still true in unity 2018 would love to know if anyone out there does um here's the deal so i wanted to sit here and like tell you how much better it would be to keep your meshes underneath that and how much better a file size it would be and then i ran a test and this happened and like i don't know i don't get it um i don't do this for a living what what am i looking at why is it 16 kilobytes bigger to shave off one try, even though it's supposedly being stored as halves instead of floats? Am I understanding computer science wrong, or is this something wrong with Unity? Is it something wrong with LCMA? Am I completely stupid? I, I, I don't know. This baffled me for a couple days. I was like, okay, um, Unity? What the fuck? Hello? What? Okay, sure. And that's the real theme of this TLX talk. Unity throwing a curveball on a dime right before you are due to release or present something. Like you're sitting here like, all right, everything's gonna be great. I'm gonna just drop this bomb on you and all you're gonna be like, oh yes, that's so it's a difference. And then Unity just does that. And you're like, ah, <laughs> 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 Beautiful. Sorry, I died. I got a load. Give me a minute. How many megabytes you got downloaded there now? I'm kidding. Unity, you're great. I love you. Thank you for enabling all of us. Thank you for enabling everyone to create the things they want to create. Uh, get better. Please, for the love of God, get better. Please, for the love of God, let my, you know, graphics card uh, support your know, GPU light mapping in 2019. They fixed this in 2019 to 2020. They didn't backport it to 2018. Hey, VR Chad, you want to mind hurrying up the new for 2019 <laughs> um above all else i love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart
Seriously, I mean it. I have never, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I have never felt more at home inherently in such a short period of time in like a community, especially a community of like creators as I have this. I love each and every one of you. I like really, I'm such a happy, I want to do everything I can. It's made me like, like what Varney was saying with motivation. It makes me want to do everything I can to contribute. And like, cause I come also from a background of like, I've edited Wikipedia, a whole bunch of discogs. Um, I'm an archivist. I maintain a whole bunch of stuff. People know me for uh, hosting public torrents and stuff. I'm, I like contributing to internet things. I want to help. And I've never wanted to help more than I have now. I want to just make so many cool worlds so many cool prefabs i want to try and do whatever i can to just help everyone get better at optimizing help everyone get better at making the stuff they want to make it really puts a lot of passion in me and i could not have done any of that without the cube fruits i love the cube fruits thank everyone for being there and i would like to give double thanks to as i put sugar daddy varnian uh crime lord skipper fairly valid panda uh banned for a hundred years asus no show craft numero uno flower of god uh little ghosty constantine and of course my awfully hot co coffee pot for putting up with all of my insane rambles and uh you know, general demeanor, stature, nomenclature, ones and fleets, with my mind resigning amongst all the time that I have left remaining, which is none. I'm sorry, no more fun. My name is Table, and that was my fable. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I love all of you and everyone at home. I don't even know what to say uh, at this point. Are we even like? Do we even want questions after this? Like, do we? Do we, do we, do we need that? Questions. I will gladly take questions. I will gladly take questions if that is sort of in the last life. three days, Table. That is my okay, question. Give me a Wait, sec. More importantly, how much coffee have you had? Well, it definitely wouldn't fit as a float. Let me, I can tell you that. Um, how much coffee have I had? That much? <laughs> Probably that much. Uh, With my Question. small knowledge of Unity, your texture <laughs> com compression, uh, comparison uh, visually seems wrong because you compare Crunch DXT5 versus Crunch DXT1. That Sorry. was me. I know that. I can promise you I actually did test the same format too. That was just because literally when I did it on the reference one, which was uh, Panda's Texture for the Statue of My World, I happened to get rid of the alpha channels for the thing. It is more compressible, even if you, even uh, if you keep I know, the same format. For your comparison, the legitimacy is reduced because of the DXT one versus DXT. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I didn't, I, I know, I was crunching for three days straight. I know. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trust me, I'm very aware of that. Yeah. Is that a... Anybody else? I've, I've got a question. I will answer anything. Yeah. So. This talk was a little bit over my head, but I think I got it. Um, but I have okay. a particular issue with compressing normal maps, and I'm not exactly sure. sure what to do. I get all these weird artifacts whenever I try to compress it in uni Unity, and they go away when I disable compression, but then I have like a 20 megabyte normal map. What are my options? Yeah. Like? I'm going to say, first of all, it's not actually 20 megabytes. Of course, everything does get compressed LZMA at build time. But, like, it still is bigger than it could be. The whole point of crunch compression is that everything gets modified so that when the final compression pass happens, it's more compressible data and everything is a far easier time. Um, <sighs> compressing normal maps, if you're not happy with the way crunch compression does it, then most of what you can do is sort of look at the texture and and i don't want to get on this too long because this is going to get into me actually like explaining like the like texture compression and like the you know, way scan lines work and stuff but like think about it like 
how much of your normal map do you really need? Can you get rid of a lot of dead space? Can you try and re-UV the objects so that the normal map is much smaller, but still conveys like a whole bunch more and keep everything one solid color, especially horizontally. Horizontal is more important than vertical. Um, if you can make things compressible horizontally, everything is great. Uh, and then, yeah, like at that point, you just kind of have to modify the, the actual normal map itself, but uh, just yeah. live with it, kind of. Uh, downscale it. <laughs> downscale. Yeah, yeah downscale, downscale it. it. You can you can downscale the resolution. I'm assuming it's what not what he wanted, like uh, you know, level of detail. Like but okay. yeah, but like, yeah. People don't really like. People usually keep it like 2K, and like honestly, a lot of things are tiled. So unless if you paint it in a substance painter and it's a tile, like if it's a tiled material, yeah. you usually can get away with scaling it way down to like what you think you might have usually do. So. Yeah, like I said, if you take, if you have like for example a normal map that's just like a bunch of like a texture, like maybe like a phone, like a fabric or fur or something, like for like cloth, you could just re UV it and then kind of scale it down. Like you just crop it and kind of tile it, get the same results. You have to get a little creative with it. The idea though is that yeah. less data, less resolution, less, uh, you know, higher frequency of between pixel changes. So the colors vary drastically change if you keep it kind of smooth or if you keep it all the same color, everything's good um, and you'll be fine. So more samey colors and, and lower resolution. If you don't like crunch compression, that is. Yeah. Ken, did you have Bannerman? One? Yeah, I do. Ken. No, 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 uh, no, yeah, no, I'm no, wondering no, if. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have one? No, no. I don't. Go, go okay. ahead. Go ahead, Ken. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was wondering. Um, in the web community, I know the basis uh, texture compression is uh, talked about a lot. Is that something that's come to Unity at all to be able to do basis uh, texture compression? Uh, uh, I, I honestly I couldn't give you like that much of an answer. I'm not too in depth with like the Unity like or, like like if there's a basis compression like scene for Unity, I guess. Um, I do come from like doing a lot of uh, texture compression for web stuff and like little people's uh, you know projects, programs, and whatnot. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know, honestly. Okay. If Unity's got like a scene thing for that. Okay. Yeah, I know uh, it's, I'd love it's to know gotten a lot of. I know that uh, just in terms of doing Mozilla Hub stuff, a lot of folks have been sort of integrating the you know command line for basis texture compression, and it's sort of it makes everything look great. So. Uh, but oh, yeah. I, it, since you were, everything. so okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple questions from the stream comments. Um, first okay. is from Legends, which is um, yes. can have, and I, I already know the answer to this one, but you know maybe you can go into some more depth. Can having multiple LOD uh, cause CPU issues if LODs are not needed? If LODs are not need, like I said, obviously every group is data and every group requires a little bit of overhead for Unity to do the calculations of, okay, how far are you and how big is this thing on the screen? Um, the point of the culling is you use them in cases where the sheer amount of draw calls that are being instanced on your machine are way too high for what you honestly need. For my case where I like, for example, you have the cafe, uh, and most of the time, the vast majority of the map, you're going to be looking at it. Like, if you think about it, like, maybe 5% of the map is being there, and then 95% of it is not being there. So, usually you're going to be looking more at it, and when you're looking at it and everything's being rendered and you can't see any of it, doesn't make any sense. So, the overhead from all those LOD groups is, like, usually smaller than the actual performance that getting that culling in saves if you do it properly. There is a bit of overhead, though. I think if you're, like, doing a devouring, I wouldn't say do this, like, don't go slapping LOD groups on literally everything in the devouring. That's probably a very bad idea. Um, <laughs> don't, don't need to. You've already done plenty for that uh, with, like, you know, custom stuff. And if you can afford to just be like, hey, um, we're going to just have custom scripts where if you're not in this area, just disable all the game objects once and then never think about it again. That's the ideal way to really do it. However... Not everyone does Udon stuff, and usually this is something you do more for like small amounts of things than, you know, big ones. So uh, don't put this on like literally everything in your scene, but if you have like problem objects, then this is a quick 
cheap way of like you know trade-off optimization you're making the trade-off of doing a little bit of cpu stuff but then it's not as much cpu stuff because your computer doesn't have to go back and forth all the damn time Mm. And I will, um, I'll add my piece of advice there. We did not use any logs in the devouring because it was an yeah. indoor, uh, very complex environment in which inclusion culling did uh, almost all of our work for us. We very rarely yeah. had something where you had a high detailed object you're looking for uh, at from a distance. So, however, if you have a Breath of the Wild style open place, you have to do LODs, uh, otherwise. Yep. You, you know, you, you, you can't function. So that's the answer to that question is it depends because LODs also add memory. So if you are adding yes, more meshes, do. you're adding more memory. So you have to balance depending on your particular application. Okay, next question from Ms. Dabby. Did you ever try to upload two identical versions of your map, but one before optimizations and one after to compare memory slash CPU between both? Yeah, um, I've done this a couple of times uh running like uh different tests where like i will have one version of the map um i go in there i look at how it performs with like my real time uh performance applications where i can look at it and then i just do a render doc uh you know grab the whole thing look at it a little bit and be like oh, okay that was neat i did that for um plank recently because i very recently have been playing around with render doc uh and then uh, there were some times where I would uh, do that in editor as well. I never would go so far as to upload multiple IDs, but usually just different versions of the same world. Like I would sort of like be like, okay, let me do all the changes for this. Cool, revert those. Uh, usually I would like have like some kind of quick way like putting everything in a game object or whatever. Revert that. I'm like okay, cool. Flip back a few times. Be like, hmm. That was usually my process going through Plank was just lots of rapid builds, being like, all right, I played around with these bits. Uh, when that changed, okay, cool. Uh, poke around in hex editor, see where it exactly it is. Okay, so that's where that's located, which meant that if I change this value to be this, that's going to be more compressible because it's closer to the beginning of the file than the end of the one. So I'm going to keep iterating on that until you just crunch everything you possibly can. Um, yeah, lots of back and forth. A little crazy. A little crazy. I did say take everything with a grain of salt. 